Hi lovely and darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy. Today I am reviewing The Night Diary by Vera Hiranandani. I listened to the audiobook for this which was narrated by Prira Ayer. Hopefully I pronounced both those names right. Sorry if I didn't. They are down in the description below if you want to check them out. So this is a J fiction, um, like late elementary school, early middle school, uh, fiction novel. It's actually historical fiction. It is set during the partition of India in Pakistan, like right when that was happening in 1947. Um, it is following uh, Indian main character. And it is 12 year old Nisha, who is this very shy girl. She doesn't really like talking and speaking up for herself. She's only really comfortable with her family. And even then, it's mostly her twin brother that she talks to. So her I think her brother gives her this diary and she starts writing in it and she writes all her diary entries to her mother who died when the twins were born so her family is just her her father their grandmother that I think they called daddy it was something that was really confusing because I kept thinking that it was the dad but it's actually the grandmother and then they also have a cook named Kazi who while not technically part of the family um, does spend a lot of time with the kids and helping take care of them in the house. So Nisha's twin brother Emil is very artistic and like he likes drawing and making art but I think he's also dyslexic in here. They don't use the terminology of dyslexic because the time period in 1947 that wasn't a word that would have been common but she's describing things about him having trouble reading and things getting mixed up for him. And their father is a doctor in the area, and he's actually pretty, uh, like, well-known and well-regarded. But they're living in the part of India that after the partition becomes Pakistan. And so they have to move because they're Hindu. And Pakistan is set up for the Muslims, and the Hindus are supposed to go live in India. And, like, this whole period and this whole situation with the partition of India is very confusing to 12-year-old Nisha. And honestly, it's very confusing to adults also. Like, everything that went down in that time period is stuff that, like, I vaguely knew about. And really, most of it was from watching one Doctor Who episode, even. Like, I'd heard of the partition of India and it's splitting. But, like, it's good to have people and actual stories. I do better with history if there's an actual story to go with it. So this was incredibly helpful and it's really well done. It captures the struggle of that time period and also like the refugee experience because that's what they are. They are having to leave where they grew up because of a political movement that they had nothing to do with. And even though they have a place to go in India, they're still experiencing that uprooting and that turmoil and the uncertainty. Nisha and her family's experiences are interesting also because their mother was Muslim. So she feels like she's half and half, like she's not fully Hindu, she's kind of Hindu just because her dad is, and that's what her grandmother, like, pr practices, so that's what she's seeing in the house. But like, their cook Kazi is also Muslim, and their friends are Muslim, and so she doesn't feel like she's completely one or the other, and so she really doesn't know where she belongs in this time period and she's struggling with like a child's understanding of all this turmoil and all this really crazy things that are happening. So like it's not just the country splitting but like they start fighting. People who used to be friends are now at each other's throats just because they belong to different religions. It's a really chaotic time in India's history and a really messy one and to see it from a child's perspective like, it, she captures that chaos and that not really knowing what's going on. She's 12, she kind of is starting to become aware of the world outside, and she's starting to hear, like, her father talk to his friends about, like, Gandhi and the other political leaders of the era, but she doesn't really fully grasp all of it. So there is a lot of struggling in this book. It's not, like, a light read. Um, there are a lot of really cute, personable moments in this, um there's like a house that they stop at and Nisha becomes friends with this girl who she just like sees um and it's just this like brief little moment of like friendship that is just absolutely adorable and there's tons of moments with her and her brother that are just so cute um but also there's a lot of struggling in here they had to leave everything they can't stay in their house 
they can't really even sell it. They can't bring all their possessions with them. It's only whatever they can carry on their backs. They don't have a car. They're doing this by walking and taking the train. So just like not being able to have everything, not having enough supplies even, like they're traveling through a desert for part of this. So it's hot at night and the sun's beating down on them and they can't just easily get more water and so they're having to ration things. And even when they get to a group of people, like they get to a city with a train and like the trains are just jam packed and there is like so much chaos within the boarding and like at one point she sees a family get separated so the kids get on the train but the mother doesn't and the mother's panicking and she's like trying to because and he's just so shy that she's like trying to be like the kids are on the train but like she's having trouble saying it out loud because she saw it happen but the mother just doesn't know she doesn't even know her kids are on the train and like that kind of chaos that is happening at this time period and then there's also uncertainty about when they get to india they're not sure that their dad's gonna be able to find a job they don't know where they're gonna live they have like uncle who went beforehand and got them an apartment but like all of them are going to be staying in a one-room apartment. Their dad doesn't have a job yet. They don't know what's going to happen next. And so it's a really hard time for her. And there's like an afterword on this book about the author's experience because I think her father was in India during the time of the partition, but he was nine. And so he didn't fully understand what was happening around him. And so this is the author's kind of piecing together parts of her father's memories and also doing the research and like making it more accessible and telling those stories. Rating wise this is probably a three and a half stars. Um, I just I didn't love it the same way that I love a lot of four star reads and probably a lot of that is the fact that it's just a children's book. Um, and not that I don't also love kids books. There was just something about it that I didn't fully ever get behind. So. Yeah, there is my review for The Night Diary by Vera Hernandotti. Go check it out. So peace out. I love you guys and keep reading. Bye.